Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and you are watching my knitting podcasts. And today we have another tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you how to make the colletti, which I'm wearing at the moment. So the colletti is started at the back neck. So we are first increasing for the full width of the back and then working straight until the armholes. After that we will pick up stitches along both shoulders and work the front before joining them together at the front neck and then again working straight until the armhole. After that we will join the front and the back and work the body in the round. So I will show you how to do that. And lastly, we will pick up stitches along the armholes for the sleeves and along the neck for the neckband. And the colletti has this very simple uh, lace pattern as well as a simple cable pattern. So I will show you how to make both of them. So how to knit the easy lace pattern, all the increases, decreases you need for shaping the back and I will also show you how to knit the cables both with and without the cable needle. So after you have uh, watched this tutorial not only can you knit your own colletti but you can also knit cables and lace and continue on to um, harder projects. And this um, tutorial is for also good for, for example, the Karinati, uh, Karinati pattern or the upcoming new Vivian T pattern because they both have a similar shape. So the back is worked in the same way, all the, all the construction is the same for both of those patterns. Um, and also for Karinati and Vivian T. Um, the cables are really easy, so after you master these cables, you're, I'm sure you can also make both of those. So that's the basic construction. I will also show you how to do the tubular bind off that I used for the cuffs. So that will make, and also the hem, so that will make um, the bind off edge look like it rolls from one side to the other. So it's very pretty and it's also really stretchy. So that's uh, really good for, for that. The colletti is intended to uh, be worn with some positive ease, which means that the width of the sweater or t-shirt is wider than my actual bust. So when you are choosing your size, measure your own bust measurement and then um, add the intended ease to the bust measurement and that's where you get the right size. So the sizes, um, the finished bust measurements of the t-shirt uh, mentioned in the pattern uh, are for um, the, the finished t-shirt. So not the actual bust measurement but it's your bust plus the intended ease. So choose the size that is closest to your um, your actual bust plus the ease. And like I said, it's intended to be worn with quite a lot of positive ease. So um, if you're between sizes, um, you have to kind of like decide whether you want to have a more relaxed fit. If you want it to be looser, then go up with for one size. Or if you want it to be slightly slimmer, it would also look really nice as a slimmer t-shirt then you can uh, size down. So it's kind of up to you. You can also check out your favorite t-shirt and see how much ease that, was, that one has and then uh, choose a size that is uh, similar with the bust uh, intended um, ease, so with, with the finished um, bust measurement and choose the size that is closest to the sweater that you like, the ease that you like. So that's how you choose your right size. And now I'm going to show you what yarn you can use and what other materials you need to make your own colette. 
So I made my Coletti uh, with Knitting for Olives Pure Silk Held Double. So it is this yarn. So you can see it, and it is 100% silk. It's a light fingering weight, 250 meters per 50 grams. Here you can see. wants to focus. So here you can see the uh, content and the meters. And this is the colorway putty. For mine I used the colorway powder which is um, a slightly grayish beige color. Uh, so I hold held the yarn double to get kind of like DK weight um, yarn combination. But if you don't have this yarn on hand, you could use a combination of any two fingering weight yarns or choose a DK weight yarn. Um, but if you choose a DK weight yarn, then just um, use a single strand of it. Other alternatives that I picked here, uh, this is a really beautiful uh, fine merino. So it's 100% merino yarn from Sakami. And here you can see, and holding this double would also match the gauge for this one. So you could also go for uh, two strands of merino weight yarn, or here I have um, Woolberry Fiber Company's uh, Homestead yarn. So this is a very cashmere DK. And it has uh, 231 yards for 100 grams. So it's a DK weight yarn. So either one strand of this or, for example, two strands of, of this would do the trick. Also, if you want to um, add a bit of luxury with mohair, then it's not probably not so summery. But the, for example, if you want to have something for spring or or autumn or for layering. I made this little matching scarf. So I used Knitting for Olives Merino with their uh, silk mohair. And this is the same stitch pattern that as, as I have for for the sweater, as you can see. So it has the same cables and the same, same lace. And it looks like this. The gauge is the same. So you could also go Go for this combination if you want. So have one fingering weight yarn and then uh, add a bit of silk mohair. So for example, I have a similar combination over here. So this is Knitting for Olives Merino. The color is called uh, Dusty Mousse. And then there are soft silk mohair in, in colorway a rainy day. So I think this would be also really nice for for this um, t-shirt or there is Totle Martin yarns a tot single sock so it's 100% merino yarn the color is called champagne and you could either work this um, help double or add a strand of mohair so here is uh, knitting for olives soft silk mohair in colorway elderflower so I think this would also be a really nice combination when you start knitting, remember to make a little swatch. So use the cable and lace pattern. It's also a really good opportunity to practice the stitches a bit. Make the um, swatch with the, the uh, recommended needle size and the yarn that you're going to use for your uh, t-shirt. And then um, remember to wash the swatch, let it dry and measure the gauge from it. And if you have more stitches per 10 centimeters or four inches than in the intended gauge, then you have to um, do another swatch with um, larger needles. And if you have less stitches per 10 centimeters than in the in intended gauge, then um, go down with the needle size so you will uh, get closer to the right gauge and it's really important for you to find the right needle size for your uh, knitting style and your yarn 
um, the needle size that it is in the pattern is only a recommendation. That's the needle size that I use to get um, to gauge with my style of knitting, which is maybe a bit more loose, rather rather loose than than tight. So if you're a very tight knitter, you might have to go down with the needle size and if you're a very loose knitter you might have to go slightly up with the needle size so choose choose a larger or smaller needle and of course if you're changing yarns every yarn behaves differently so then you have to also take that into um, account when you're um, choosing needles so to get the right size of garment at the end of your knitting, you have to have the right gauge because the gauge is how I calculate uh, the size. So if you have the wrong gauge, that will also mean that the t-shirt will turn out wrong size. So for, for your pattern, uh, the pattern tells you what, what needles to use, uh, what cable lengths you need. Uh, but if you uh, have made your swatch then use the needle size that gets you the right gauge and for the ripping part choose a needle, that, a needle size that is uh, slightly smaller so one or two sizes smaller than for the main pattern and i like using circular needles they are especially good for working the body in the round but for the sleeves, you might want to use, for example, uh, double-pointed needles. So it's totally up to you and your own style. If you are knitting cables with a cable needle, then use the cable needle um, for, for the cables. But if you want to learn how to make them without cable needles, then you don't, don't need that. Uh, we are also going to use some stitch markers. I like using these um, like coilless safety pins. I think they are really good because they can be removed and, and you can change the place. Also, you will need a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends, scissors, and either waste yarn or then you can use uh, cable cords for taking the stitches on hold. For example, the back stitches while we're working on the front. So that's the materials that you're going to need. Check the written pattern to see, for example, how many uh, meters or yards of yarn you need for your size. And I always recommend to have a little bit of extra on hand, especially if you're using hand dyed yarn, so you can make sure that you have a little bit of extra of the same dye lot. Um, you can always use the leftovers for little scarves like this or, or a hat or something else but it's better to have a little bit of extra than run out of yarn in the middle of your knitting especially if you want to change the length so if you want to make it slightly longer or or make the sleeves longer or, or something like that um, it's good to have a, a bit of extra yarn on hand but I think that's everything we need for now and let's start knitting. I'm now ready to cast on for the back neck. So I'm using my larger needles and both yarns at the same time. But if you are using DK weight yarn, you can work with a single strand, but I'm using fingering weight yarn held double. And we are going to cast on 42 stitches with the long tail cast on method. So here's a little trick on how to measure how much yarn you need for the long tail cast on method so you don't run out of yarn in the middle of the cast on. So I usually leave about 15 centimeters or 6 inches of spare and then just roll the yarn 10 times around your needle two, seven, eight, nine, ten, and here's ten wraps. And then I'm holding my thumbs in a place, so at both ends of the yarn, and just unwrap it from the needle. And just take this away. And this is how much yarn I need for casting on ten, ten stitches. So if I want to cast on 42 stitches, I take four times 
the amount of yarn I need for uh, 10 stitches plus a little extra so this should be enough for the long tail cast on and then just make a slip knot and put the knot on the needle and tighten it so this is our first stitch and then just start casting on stitches for the back neck so I will be making 42 stitches so this is the long tail cast on method if you need instructions for that you can search that on YouTube so here I have all my 42 stitches and I'm ready to start working on it and we have first our setup row and that was just to knit everything so just make sure you're using the yarn that comes from the balls and not the yarn end and just knit over all the stitches And if you are working with two strands of yarn, make sure you go through all the strands. So you take everything on your needle, both from, from this um, yarn that comes from the skein, as well as the stitches on the needles. So that you don't go between the strands and work just half of the yarn or leave out little little pieces of yarn that you haven't worked so this will make it much neater just knit everything until the end and on the next round we will start our increases and I will show you how to do that And plus few, and then just turn the work. <coughs> and then we are ready to start working our chart. So we start with row one, and it is a right side row. So we have our edge stitch, which was a pearl one. And then we have a left leaning increase. So we are grabbing the yarn that goes between the two stitches and grab it from behind, lift it on the left needle and then just knit it through the back loop. And then just knit until the end of the row or until one stitch remains. So you have the red box the uh, outlined pattern repeat box so that just means that you will work that box five times in total but since this is just to knit the whole row you don't have to worry about that so just knit everything so when you <clears throat> reach the end of the box just start at the beginning of the box again and and you're working it for like by this total so for the stitches total since it's eight stitch repeat and here we go the last ones so on this side we have the right leaning increase so this, this time I will pick the yarn from the front and then twist it so I create this little twist here and then just knit it through the front loop so this is our right leaning increase and then just pull 
the last stitch and then turn around we are working the wrong side row so this time read the chart from left to right and know that some of the abbreviations have changed so if the symbol was a pearl stitch on the right side on the wrong side you should knit it so this first stitch is a knit one and then we have our make one right pearl wise but since this is a wrong side row you should just make one right so again from the front twist the yarn on the needle and then just knit it and then again we knit until the end of the row so it's the pearl symbol but since this is the wrong side then the symbol is to knit so every knit stitch is a pearl stitch on the wrong side and a pearl stitch is a knit stitch so if you turn it around you can see that it looks like a pearl stitch so just knit again until the end of the row and then we will make our increase at that side as well so here we go our last stitch is here and on this side it was make one left so from behind lift it on the needle and then work it through the back loop and the last one is a knit stitch then on the third round we start to make our lace so pull the first stitch and make one left leaning increase and then we knit two stitches together so instead of knitting one just go through two stitches and knit them together and then make a yarn over so we go behind the yarn just leave it on the needle and again decrease yarn over knit two together yarn over and we'll keep working like this until just one stitch remains so we have our last decrease knit them together and then make the yarn over and this might be a bit tricky we make immediately the um, increase here at the end so front to front twist knit it and make sure you have the yarn over on your needles and then the last one was to pull so i have my little lace pattern here and i'm now ready to work the row seven so just pull one and make one left and then we have five knit stitches so I just knit five and pull one and then we are ready to start our outlined pattern repeat so we will work the pattern repeat five times total so it's eight stitches five times total we start with pearl one and then knit six and then again Pearl one and then start again at the beginning of the box so pearl one knit six and pearl one and just keep repeating this five times total And the last one, so pull one, knit six. And pull one. And 
and then the rest of the row so purl one knit five and we have our right leaning increase at the end and purl one I just realized that I forgot to place the markers at the um, cast on row so I will do it now it will make it easier for me to pick up stitches for the shoulders later on so this is the first stitch of the cast on and on this side this is the last one so I will just place these markers here if you did that already at the beginning of the pattern good for you I forgot and this is now row 9 and this is the first time that we have a pearl wise increase so I will show that to you until now we have made all the make one increases as knit stitches but here on this row it's going to be a pearl stitch so a left leaning increase make one increase with a pearl stitch so the same way we did before go behind the yarn lift it under needle and then we used to knit it through the back loop now we'll just purl it through the back loop so the same thing except that instead of knitting we will purl it and then just work until the end of the row and we'll make the right leaning purl increase over there So at the end of the row, just pull the second to last stitch and pick the yarn between the last two stitches from the front, then twist it and instead of knitting it, we will purl it. And here's our make one right curl increase and the last one was a knit stitch. So the same thing over here, just knit the first stitch and then pick the yarn from the front so this is a right leaning increase and it's going to be a purl increase since this is a wrong side row so it's a make one purl on the wrong side and then just knit and pull like you did at the end of the row and remember at the other side to make the left increase also as a pearl increase so remember to check the changed abbreviations for the wrong side rows and now we are on row 11 so i'm ready to start making cables and i will show you two ways of making them with and without the cable needle so we start the row by again purling the first stitch then we have the left leaning increase this time it's a knit increase and then just purl two and here's our first cable so we have right cables which means that the stitches from the left side of the cable will move to the right so it looks like it's turning to the right and I have my cable needle here so I will pick the first three stitches as if to purl so not to twist the base of it and I put them behind the work and then just knit three stitches from the left needle and then the three stitches I had on my cable needle so here's our first cable then just pull the next two stitches and again three stitches on the cable needle to the back and then work three stitches from your left needle and three stitches from the cable needle 
So this is how you do them with a cable needle. But I usually knit without cable needle because I always forget to take my cable needle with me and also I find it a bit too much work to keep changing needles. So what I usually do is I take all the cable stitches, so this cable is worked over six stitches, so I take all of them on my right needle and then I pick these three stitches from behind because they are moving to the behind. And then I hold my left thumb against the base of these three last stitches against the left needle. So when I slide the needle off, they don't drop because I'm holding them against the left needle. And then just pick everything up again and I move them to the front and just knit everything. So this is how I knit stitches without the cable needle. So it looks exactly the same. I will show that to you one more time. So slip all six stitches. I usually slip them first uh, without just putting my needle in. First of all because uh, slipping them loosens them a bit and the second reason is that I can hold them here with my thumb so I don't have to worry about dropping them and then just bring them to the front and knit everything and purple too and just continue like this until the end of the row and after this just follow the chart you will be making the increases on every round so with the increases we are starting with the width of the back neck and then increasing to the width of the shoulder so this will also help make the nicely sloped shoulder and we are increasing for the full width read the pattern and see what row of the chart you will be ending with because different sizes have a different amount of increases so just keep following the chart like this until the row that is noted for your size i have now finished all my back increases and what I will do next is take a couple of these uh, stitch markers and I will attach them. So one at this end, the last stitch over here. And then the second one to the other, other end. And after that I will just continue in the cable pattern without any more increases. So I will now change the working from the main pattern and make sure that you follow the pattern for your size and the pattern also tells you um, which row of the chart you will continue with. So what I will do here is to make my edge stitch which is a pearled one and then I will just continue in the pattern as established. So these markers will be showing you where to pick stitches for the fronts later on so we start from one marker and work until the second one so this is the the shoulder line that will be used for picking stitches for for the fronts so that's why we placed the markers and then just continue like i said continue in the pattern without any increases so the shape will start changing so instead of this increasing shape it will go straight from now on so just work, work in the pattern as established for your size. 
So my body is now the required length after the last increase on the side. So now I'm going to put the back on hold and then work on the front. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, this uh, stitch cord. You can also use waste yarn if you don't have this, but this is like this plastic cube that has a little hole at the middle, in the middle. And just put this cord on my needles and just push it there so it, it sticks. And then I can just drop all my stitches of my needles. onto the cord. Just drop everything. And you can remove the needles. And I usually make a little slip knot on the end. So this prevents the stitches from falling off the cord. And then then I can cut the yarn. Just remember to leave enough tail so you can easily weave in the ends later on. And this is now my back. This is the back neck. And this is going to be my underarm. And the sleeve opening might look uh, a bit funny and short at this moment. But since it's going to be a drop shoulder, the front is going to add a bit of length over here. So don't worry about the measurement right now. Then I will start picking stitches along the left shoulder. So from this marker until this marker and again using my yarn health double I'm attaching it at this corner and then picking up one stitch from here and after that I'm picking one stitch per each knitted row so into every stitch from this shoulder row. So here you can see the stitches. So I will pick every stitch from the shoulder. Check your written pattern on how many stitches you should have on your needles after this step. Make sure you catch everything. So here I have all my stitches picked up and then we're going to start working a wrong side row. So this is our setup row. So just knit everything like we did for the top back. So our Set up row and then again just turn to work and then we are ready to start working our charted pattern and the last stitch of the row is going to be the edge stitch so the same as here for the back you pull the last stitch on every uh, right side row and knit it on every wrong side row and make sure you follow the chart indicated for your size. So just work in the charted pattern until the end. So the first few rows are easy because it's just knit and purl. But just continue in the pattern until you have the neck increases. 
I'm now ready to work the row 17 of the left front chart, which means I will start increasing for the neck. So according to the chart, we'll just pull the first stitch and then we have a left leaning pull increase. So make one left pull wise. So from behind, put the stitch on the needle and then pull it through the back loop. The same way we did in the back increases. And then just work until the end of the row. So I will now continue increasing stitches at the neck edge according to the chart. And the last row, the row 31 of the charts, will be knitted only after we have made the right front and joined the front of the neck together. So work the next rows and increase for the neck. And at the end of the row 30 of the left front chart, break the yarns, put the stitches on hold, and then we will work the right side of the neck and I have my stitch markers here so I will start picking from this corner and the same way pick one stitch for each knitted row until this marker and check your rhythm pattern how many stitches you should have on your needles after that and then work the right front chart in the same way as we did for the left front until the end of the row 30 and then we are ready to join the front so we will be casting on stitches for the front neck and joining these two sides together. I'm now ready to join the front neck so I have finished both charts so all the increases for the front neck are done and what I will do is I will work the last row of the right front chart until the end of the row and then I will show you two different methods of casting on stitches for the front neck. So the first one is the back loop cast on method and the second one, one is the cable cast on method. So I will just continue until the end of the row. So the first alternative to cast on stitches for the front neck is the back loop cast on method, which is the easier, but it's not as pretty and the stitches will be a bit looser. So the back loop method, you just create a little loop with your finger. I usually go behind the yarn and then just twist it and put the twist on my needle. So this is one stitch, two, three and so on. So check your rhythm pattern, how many stitches you should cast on for the front neck. Just undo the ones that I just made and show you the cable cast on method, which is the one that I prefer because it makes um, a neater and firmer edge. So what I do is this is the right side of the work. I will turn the work and work from the wrong side. And I will go between these two stitches. So not into the stitch, but between them. And grab the yarn from my finger, pull it through and put it on the needle and then do it again go between the stitches grab the yarn and put it on the needle again and just do this as many times as you need to cast on the required amount of stitches so between the stitches pull the yarn and it's Good idea to keep it quite loose so you can go between the stitches more easily. 
to just continue like this until you have cast it on all the stitches. So after I have cast it on all the stitches for the front neck, I just turn this around again. And the next thing I will do is to take the stitches held for the left front back on my needles. So put the cord on my needle and then just slide all the stitches back onto my left needle. Here we go. We can remove the cord. And then I will just continue working over the left front stitches. So at this point just make sure nothing has twisted, everything is aligned. And then continue the last row of the left front. So the row that we didn't knit earlier. So just continue in pattern until the end of the row. So I have now joined everything together at the front and then I will just continue working on all stitches of the front in the same main pattern as I did here on the back until I reach the same row as I did for the for the back. So I have one full pattern repeat over here to do and then a bit more but remember to work the same row as you did for the back. So the front is going to be longer than the back because this is going to be the shoulder drop you can see here. So the front is going to be turned on the back so it's going to look look something like like this. So this part of the front is going to be kind of like part of the back when we join everything together. I have now reached the same row as I did for the back and you can see here this is the length that I made for the back after the slope and this is quite a lot longer so you can see when I fold this together and bring this to the place that the shoulder slopes really nicely so this creates the shoulder drop and on the back side you can see how the part of the front is turning now to the back so this is not the center of the shoulder line but the center is over here and this part is now on the back shoulder so that's why this part is shorter than the front because some of the front becomes this part of the shoulder. So the next thing we're going to do is to join the front and back together and I'm now ready to work a right side row. So what we're doing is we're going to decrease the extra side stitches from each side so to get to an even uh, number of stitches so we can work the pattern over the whole body. So at the moment we have one extra purl stitch on each side of the front and each side of the back. So we're going to decrease it and what you have to do is to check what is the second stitch on your left needle. So I have a purl stitch which means that I will purl these stitches together. If, they, if the second stitch was a knit stitch 
so on the next row that we're making it's going to be a knit stitch then knit the stitches together so we're going to stay in pattern and then I have my cable row so I will work until I have the last two stitches remaining of the front and then I will decrease the second side stitch in the same way. Here are my last two stitches of the front and again I will knit them together but this time with slip slip purl. So if you had a knit stitch here before the last stitch then do a slip slip knit decrease. So I slip both stitches and then I purl them together through the back loop. And then I'm ready to take the stitches held for the back on my needles. So just undo the knot from the cord or your waist yarn and take the stitches on your needles. So I'm putting the cord, end of the cord on my needle and then just sliding all the stitches of the cord onto my needle. And just remove the cable and then bring the sides together. And the same thing here pearl or stitch the first two stitches together as we did on the other side and then work the same row as we did for the front over all the back stitches until two stitches remain. These are my last two stitches of the back and I'll do the same slip slip pearl decrease over them. So slip both stitches, put them back on my left needle and then pull them together through the back loop. And then we are ready to join everything in round. So check that you have all the pieces lined in the correct direction and then we will place our marker so this is our beginning of the round marker and then continue working in the round. Continue in pattern and when you are working in the pattern note that we are now working in the round not flat so all the rows are now rounds and they are worked from the right side of the work so check the changed abbreviations for example this garter stitch and lace pattern uh, these were knitted from the wrong side so now they are pulled from the right side so every round is now worked from the right side and then we'll just continue in the charted pattern repeating the pattern over all of the body stitches until our body is about four centimeters less than the desired length. So just continue in the pattern now in the round. So I have now put everything on a hold on a cable cord as you can see here. So I can try this on. So I always recommend you try the garment that you're knitting on as you work on it because everybody has slightly different body measurements also people's styles are different so somebody wants to have a longer body whereas another person wants to have a more cropped t-shirt so that's why i usually tell people to try their knits on and the easiest way is to put the stitches on hold either on a piece of waist yarn or cable cord or alternatively you can use um, two long cable needles so you put half the stitches on one uh, needle and the second half on, on another but I have this now 
on a cable cord so I can try it on and see how I like the length. So here you can see the length on me and I think it's a really good length now before the bottom ribbing so it's going to add about four centimeters um, 1.5 inches to it so that's how it's going to start to look so I'm ready to start the ribbing next and I'll just put the stitches back on my needles and since I'm going to continue with the ripping I will put them back on my smaller set of needles but you can also um, change back to your normal set of needles continue with the length and then change to your smaller needles when you're ready to start the ripping but I'm going to change to the smaller needles immediately before I put my stitches on the needles um, a few more words about the perfect length for your sweater. Of course I recommend you try it on and see how it fits like I did just now and see that the fit is perfect but also at least I am a very visual person so I usually try to um, end with a full pattern repeat as you can see here. So this is the end of the lace section and the next row would be the first row of the cable section. So this is a visually very good place to change into the ribbing. Another good place would be at the end of the cable section, so over here. So you can change after working the cables, leave, leave out the cable um, lace part and start the ribbing after, after the cables. Or another place that I, th I think is a good place to start would be halfway through the cable part. So try to find a line that is visually pleasing to you as well as the correct length. So I think for at least for me it looks better if it's a couple of centimeters, one inch or maybe even two inches too long or too short if the pattern ends um, where it naturally ends so for example here at the end of, uh, on end of the lace section so it's visually more pleasing to start the ripping after after this than for example making just two pearl lines and leaving the lace out and starting the cable um, ripping here or starting the ripping over here so I think uh, work either to the end of the cable pattern, to the end of the lace pattern, or halfway through the cable pattern for the most uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, way before starting the ripping. So I will now put the stitches back on my smaller needles and then we will start working the ribbing. For the ribbing we are going to alternate between one knit stitch and one purl stitch. And that will create the ribbed pattern. So knit one, then purl one. And as you can see I changed to the smaller needles. So knit one, purl one. And just continue working like this over all stitches for about four centimeters or one and a half inch. About that or something. You can you can change the length of the ribbing. So if you want a shorter ribbing then add just a few rows or you can also make it longer. The ribbing is done so that the edge doesn't start to curl, although I don't think it would do that because it has this textured pattern, but usually for patterns we make the ribbing so that the edge doesn't curl, also it adds a bit of stretch to the edge. And we change to smaller needles so that the gauge for the ripping is slightly um, tighter than for the main pattern so the edges won't start to flare. So this will keep the edges a bit tighter. So just continue in this pattern until the ripping part is about 4 centimeters, 1.5 inches and then we will do the tubular bind off. 
So I'm now done with the hem ribbing and I can remove my beginning of the round marker and you can either bind off all stitches like normally just knit one then pull the next one and pull the stitch over and off the needle or you can use the tubular bind off method which I will show you next. It's my go-to bind off because it makes a nice uh, edge that looks like it's rolling from this side to the other side and it's quite stretchy and I think it's also really pretty. So the next thing we will do is we will cut the yarn so we can start binding off the stitches so we will do that by sewing and take about three times the length of the hem so the length, length of the part that you're going to bind off and then you can cut the yarn so I have my yarn now on a tapestry needle and I will start working with the stitches from the hem so I usually put this right needle somewhere into the work so it's not pointing out and sticking into and getting all tangled up so what I will do I will take this tapestry needle and I will go into the first stitch as if to purl so go into the stitch and pull all the yarn through and tighten then the next stitch which is the purl stitch I will go behind behind the work and then into the stitch as if to knit so behind this stitch between the stitches and into into this stitch and then pull the yarn through so this is our setup and we will only do that once and then we will start binding off so the first stitch you go into the first stitch as if to knit drop the stitch off the needle and then turn the needle and go in the next knit stitch as if to purl and again pull all the yarn through and tighten next one the purl stitch go into it as if to purl drop it off the needle and then again between the stitches and into the next purl stitch and pull the yarn through now it gets stuck in the needle even though I said this would help but it still helps <laughs> somewhat so again into the stitch as if to knit then the next knit stitch as if to purl and pull the yarn tighten as if to purl of the needle and then as if to knit and pull the yarn let's do one more as if to knit off the needle, as if to purl and as if to purl and as if to knit so always drop the first stitch off and then go into the next knit stitch or purl stitch and leave that one on the needle so now you can see the bind off is already starting to form here and just continue like this until you have the last two stitches left and then I will show you how to do that so I have the four last stitches remaining and again as if to knit drop off the needle and as if to purl pull the yarn through then as if to purl drop it off the needle as if to knit and the last two stitches just 
do this as if to knit, drop it off the needle, and this one as if to purl, and drop it off the needle, and then I can remove my knitting needles, just pull the yarn through the remaining two stitches. And to get rid of this little step that we have here, so there's going to be a little gap, I usually go into this stitch over here. So this was the first one that we bound off. I go into it, tighten, then the last knit stitch on the other side. And then just do that one more time here and back. And then we can go to the wrong side of the work here. And I will just weave in this yarn end. So I usually take one leg of a knit stitch on this side, so a pearl stitch on the other side, and just pull the yarn yarn through, and then just put it across these stitches a few times. And that's it. And cut the yarn. So now our body is finished and the next thing I will show to you is the neckband. So let's continue with that. So for the neckband let's start by removing all these stitch markers that we have over here unless you already did that. We don't need them anymore. So all of these stitch markers can be removed. And I will do the neck band next. You could also weave in some of the yarn ends at this point if you want. So I often like doing the neck band at this point. So it kind of like gives the final look and the sweater t-shirt will start to look more finished at this point and do the sleeves then later on. So I'll start at the um, right corner of the back neck and just join both yarns to the work. So again, holding both yarns at the same time. And let's start picking up stitches. So I will pick one stitch for each stitch here at the back neck. Just make sure you get both yarns on your needle. So just go through the cast on edge and pick up one stitch per each cast it on stitch from the neck band and knit them at the same time. So I have my shoulder cables, so 40 centimeter cables and my smaller needles for the neck band. Just walk through all the stitches. So now I'm at the corner of the neck, back neck, and then I will start picking up stitches along the first side of the front neck. So I will be picking approximately three stitches for each four rows. So you can see here at the edge as we made a pearl stitch at the edge so it's easy to pick. It looks like little leather V's at the edge. So pick always pick about three stitches and then skip one. So we get three stitches for every four rows.
So now I'm at the front neck cast on and again I will pick up one stitch for each casted on stitch like we did for the back neck. Just pick up every stitch. And then the same thing on the other side. So pick up from the right side of the neck. Just pick approximately again three stitches per each needed row until we get to the end of the row. Luna is here again. Luna. And at the end you might want to double check that your stitch count is even. So we are going to continue on an even stitch count so our ripping will be um, even because we have one knit one per one ribbing. If it's not even you can either um, work two stitches together or pick on one extra stitch when you're working the next round. So just continue like we did for the hem. Knit one, then purl one, knit one, purl one. And we'll work like this until the neckband is of desired length. And then you can do the same tubular bind of as we did for for the hem and then after that we can start working the sleeves. So here you can see the finished neckband and I also added the tubular bind off for the neckband. And as you can see it, it looks really neat. It looks like it rolls over from this side to the other side and also it's quite stretchy. This uh, pure silk yarn is not the stretchiest one but especially if you're using merino or another more bouncy yarn you can see how much it actually stretches and I also took a little bit of time to weave in all the yarn ends until this point I usually do that after I finish the body so when I do the tubular bind off because I already have the yarn um, a tapestry needle and scissors on hand so I usually take the time to finish weaving in all the all the um, yarn ends for the body and then when I work the sleeves then I only have very little yarn ends to weave in after that. So the next thing I will do we will start working on the sleeves and to start the sleeve I usually for this um, similar constructions like this where the shoulder seam has dropped on the side of the back so it's not on the middle of the um, shoulder or, or the top of the shoulder so I usually put a stitch marker approximately at the top of the sleeve so this marks the middle point of the sleeve and it's it makes it easier to pick up stitches so you can match more easily your stitch count so half of the stitches are to be picked from this side from the bottom of the sleeve opening until the stitch marker at the top and then the second half from the other side so we will start picking up stitches here at the underarm and i'm using my larger needles um, a 40 centimeter or 16 inch cable for the sleeves but you can also do this using the magic loop method and remember to hold your yarns together so we'll start picking up stitches here at the bottom just go through the fabric and pick up a stitch make sure you have enough yarn tail over here so you can weave it in and then just continue picking up stitches from the edge the same way we did for the neck band at the sides 
So approximately three stitches for each four knitted rows. And check the pattern, written pattern, how many stitches you should pick for your size. And like I said, half of those stitches should be picked from this side and the other half from this side. And I usually just pick up the stitches as they come naturally. And then on the next round, if I need to pick up a few more stitches or alternately, if I have too many stitches, then I just decrease them away. If I have too little stitches, then I pick up a few more stitches evenly on the following round to get to the correct stitch count. So don't worry about that so much at this point, of course. Try to match the stitch count as well as you can, but if you need to add a few or decrease a few stitches on the following round, that is completely okay. So now I have worked over the whole sleeve opening and then I will just put my beginning of the round marker over here and continue working in the round. So just start working according to the charted pattern. So let's pull on and then knit six. And pull one. I just keep repeating the charted pattern until the sleeve is. Oh, I made one extra postage over there. So until the sleeve is uh, of the desired length or until you reach the end of the chart. So, this is also a good place for you to modify your t shirt. So, if you want to add shorter sleeves, don't work the whole chart, um, stop where you feel comfortable. Or if you want to make longer sleeves, just keep continuing in the charted pattern, repeating it from the beginning again after you reach the end. So the end is after this uh, gutter stitch part. So that is also why I wanted to match the hem so that I will start ripping after this section. So there's going to be the cable section and, and this one. And then we will do a short ripping for the, for the cuff. Um, if you made the sleeve opening larger or smaller while you were working on the body, just pick up evenly stitches and make sure your stitch count is uh, divisible by 8 because the pattern repeat is 8 stitches long. So if you want to have your uh, sleeves looser or slightly tighter, uh, you can pick up um, one repeat of, of 8 stitches more or less so that you can get an even stitch count around the sleeve opening. Here I have the full pattern repeat for the sleeve and then I'm ready to start the ripping. And for that I will remove the beginning of the round marker and then just continue in the rib. So Knit one, pull one. So I'm changing to the smaller needles at the same time. And after I complete this round, I will replace the beginning of the round marker. So I just took it off because it will drop anyways. So just continue in the rib. Until the end of the round and then you can match the length, for example, for the hem or for the neckband or work the length that you want. And I'm also going to add a tubular bind off the same as I did for the neckband and as for the hem. And after that, I will just work the second sleeve accordingly. So if the second sleeve is totally identical, nothing else going on over there. So just do the same thing as you did for the first sleeve. And then we have a ready t-shirt. Here we have the 
finished t-shirt I have made both sleeves as you can see and I bow in all the yarn ends or the rest of the yarn ends that were still unwoven and the next thing this needs is a um, good soak and blocking so I will put this in the bathroom sink to soak under lukewarm water for about 15 minutes to half an hour or until it's completely um, soaking. It has uh, taken in all the water that it can take. And then I will put it between a couple of towels and step on the towels to get all the extra water out. So I will fold it like a burrito inside the towel and then I usually walk, walk on it so every single bit of water comes out and then just leave it flat to dry so put it somewhere smooth flat surface if you want you can pin it in place but I don't usually do that I just open it with my my hands and just leave it to dry as it is because that's the natural state of it and the form that it will always want to get back into. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this little tutorial and I hope you enjoy your new Coletti. And like I said in the beginning of the video, um, you now know all the um, stitches and construction and techniques you need for example for the upcoming Vivian tea pattern or the Karina tea pattern that I already have in my Ravelry store so just go bravely ahead and try out new things you know already more than you realize so I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial and see you again bye